so yeah, I just don't really know what it's trying to be. It's 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 not great at pretty much anything. It's been very underwhelming so far in my usage of it, and probably one of the most disappointing of the five shoes I've managed to get this year. So today, yeah, we're uh, reviewing the update review for the Brooks Ghost 14. This is my easy recovery day shoe for 2024. I've done well more than 50k, 30 miles now. So I'm going to do my, today. I'm going to do my update review. Today I'll go through all the major areas: the outsole, midsole, upper. I'll give a value and durability prediction also. And obviously, this is on the back of my usage of it for the last few weeks, months. So as normal, we'll start with the stats and facts. So this is a 130 pound shoe I rapid. I got it on a massive discount on Black Friday for £54. It's got a 12mm drop, which is obviously the top end of, of heel to toe drops. It's got 36mm in the heel and 24mm in the forefoot. For me, it fits true to size. This is my first ever Brooks uh, shoe of any kind, so it's my first delve into the world of Brooks. And for my UK size 11, which is my normal shoe size, it's 321 grams or 11.3 ounces. So yeah, I grabbed this as um, I said, it's my recovery easy day shoe. This year I've, I've specifically gone out and bought a rotation for specific uh, reasons. Like I mentioned in my Mizuno review, if you haven't watched that one, go and watch that one. Uh, but yeah, that one was my long run shoe. Uh, this is the second shoe to hit that milestone. And I've actually I've put these on the screen, I'm well past it now. I think I've gone past 120 uh, kilometers. So I'm, I'm well on my way to 100 miles. Um, but yeah, I've obviously given the update vlog now, my initial run, again, I'll tag that there. They were my initial views after my one run in the shoe. This is now my update re uh, review in terms of has anything changed. And I'm actually today I'm going to give scores on all the major areas. But like I said, this was my recovery easy day shoe. It's all I've really used it for. Um, you can't really run fast in this shoe anyway, to be fair. I'll go through that in a minute with my views and opinions. Uh, but yeah, let's get the dive straight in. All outsole is where I normally start. So outsole, this is probably one of the better parts of the shoe probably. Uh, really good grip. Uh, Really good tactile rubber. Um, I've had zero issues with grip, as you can probably see on the uh, footage. Um, I've run in all weather conditions. I've obviously started using it in January and I've used it all through the winter. So it's been wet, icy, muddy to some extent on, on certain parts. I've, I've used it mainly on road and tarmac, etc. Um, outsole is pretty good. I said no issues with grip. There is a lot of rubber. Again, I don't know if you can tell on the, on the camera, but it's quite a thick uh, chunk of um, rubber. I'll put details on the screen in terms of the thickness. I think it's a good few millimeters thick, the rubber. Uh, probably a bit too much rubber. I don't think it needs all that there, but obviously I'm assuming it's been built for durability and been built to last. Uh, but yeah, again, trying to make it as succinct as possible. I'm going to give the outsole 7 out of 10. Pretty good grip. Probably just a bit too much rubber on the outsole. Adds to the overall weight of the shoe. Uh, the geometry is not particularly flowing or easy to run through. You, you do feel fairly flat-footed. There's a, there's a tiny rocker, really late-stage rocker there. Um, the rest of the shoe is, is pretty flat. Um, and again, there's not a lot of uh, um, give in the uh, the front. There's a bit of give in the toe, but not much give in the rest of the midfoot to heel areas. So yeah, seven out of ten for the outsole. Swiftly moving on to the midsole, and this is the most disappointing bit. So and again, I never used Brooks before. Um, previous previous iterations. Again, put in the comments if you're a Brooks fan, if you're running any of the previous iterations of the Ghost. But obviously, we're on Brooks Ghost 14 now, so it's the 14th iteration of this shoe, the 14th version of this shoe. The previous versions, I believe, had DNA loft, but only for a portion of the midsole. Another, another maybe lesser, lesser quality uh, foam was used as well. This is kind of one of the first versions, apparently it's got full DNA loft. Now, f the thumb test, there's a bit of squish and actually feels pretty nice. You think like it's got, it's, it's firm, but it's got a bit of squish to it. It'd be a nice pillowy effect where you've got a bit of, bit of mush, but it's nice and firm, you don't just bottom out. Um, from all the reviews and research I did, a lot of people were saying it's a good recovery day shoe. Like I found, it's not a fast shoe, it's not responsive, it's not propulsive. Um, but my personal opinion of this midsole, I don't know what it is, I don't know what it's trying to be. There's a lot of it. Uh, it's a big clump of midsole, obviously all one type of midsole. There's not, there's not dual density or anything like that. And as well, I just don't get the 12 millimeter drop. So the heel feels plush, nice and, uh, not high stacked, but nice amount of foam. And then because you've got such a big drop, a 12 millimeter drop, the forefoot feels almost under protected. Um, 
I've run in high drop shoes before. I've run in nine, ten, and eight, eight, nine, ten millimeter drop shoes. So the, the extra two, yeah, it's, it's still a jump, but it's not. Um, it's not like it's a, it's a surprise. And I've gone from five millimeters to twelve, and it feels completely alien to me. Um, but yeah, the foam itself, like I said, I, I don't know what it's trying to be. It's not soft for me. People will say it's really soft and squishy. It isn't for me. It's it's fairly firm. There's not a lot of give in it. There's very little of it, if any uh, rebound or response or propulsion. Um, like I said, the geometry is not there, and the high drop just doesn't make it feel overly plush. If you'd if you'd done a lot of foam and a, and a minimal drop, and you had a lot of underfoot protection, then again you could argue that's the recovery bit that's protecting the legs. But because it's such a high drop, gets you on your toes, and then your forefoot's not getting pounded, but it doesn't feel like it's being overly protected. There's only like I said, twenty, uh, is it twenty four millimeters in the forefoot, so it's not a massively high forefoot area. You could have done thirty mil then, would have been far more protective. Uh, so yeah, it's been the most disappointing part of the shoe, so I'm going to have to give it a 5 out of 10 for the midsole, honestly. I, I just I generally don't know what it's trying to be. It's not soft and squishy, and therefore a recovery day shoe. It's not um, enjoyable to run in, in terms of a bit of fun and a bit of bounce. Um, and yeah, it's just been the most disappointing element of the shoe so far for me. Uh, so yeah, 5 out of 10 for the midsole. Again, I used it in the winter to start with, and now it's getting a bit springy, I'm getting a bit nervous. I, I've had a few, initially I had a few um, overheating issues. Uh, again, I put some close-ups on the screen, but yeah, it, it has got perforations, but it's it's um, dual mesh, so there's two layers to the mesh, and for me, it does run hot. There's not loads and loads of breathability. It's quite a, um, a substantial kind of fabric material. It's not like a um, cellular mesh or like some of these racing shoes have got really thin, if not non-existent uppers. Nor was I expecting that on this particular shoe, but I wanted a bit more breathability. Again, I'm, I'm comparing, I'm trying not to compare last year's budget shoes to these ones, but sometimes half the time, especially with this particular shoe, the, the budget shoe ones are outshining them. The ASICs, the £34 ASICs I bought last year, the, the midsole was probably slightly firmer in that because it's a budget shoe, but the upper was far better, far more breathable, far easier to get locked down. Uh, so yeah, there was some overeating issues. Positives for it though, uh, the plushness, there's quite a good, there's really good padding in the tongue and around the heel counter. Significant heel counters at any give whatsoever, so really firm and like I said, plenty of cushioning and protection. Comfort wise, uh, again, you can't compare. I, this, this is a walking shoe or just a shoe to wear the day to day, it's casual wear. Honestly, it's probably one of the most comfortable shoes I've worn. Like I said, the grip's good. Um, when you're not running in it, the the stack height is enough and it, it is, is comfortable enough. And, and like I said, doesn't isn't too squishy, but isn't too firm. And then the plushness of the of the upper, like I said, nice and protective, nice and warm, nice and comfortable, nice place for your foot to be. But as a running shoe, I have overheated a few times. It's getting a bit less now. Um, hope maybe my foot's just got used to it, or maybe the breathability's kicked up a, a gear. I don't know. But it's, it's, I've had a few overheating issues with the other upper. Very plush, but like I said it does run warm. So I'm going to give it a six and a half out of ten for the upper. Um, lockdown's pretty easy to get because I said you can really since the lace is down you've got plenty of protection over the over the top of the foot there's no real uh, lace pressure and like I said it's a nice plush heel counter so comfort wise it's there but also overall overheating issues I'm going to give it six and a half out of ten so I was trying not to bang on too much I can talk about shoes all day long so I'll just try and quickly get this wrapped up so value um, again I always have to go off the RRP so yeah 130 is the RRP I paid 54 bonus but um, I'm probably still disappointed in the fact I paid 54 for this. I'm disappointed in, in what the shoe has done performance-wise, even though I paid £54. For it. So for £130, I'd be massively disappointed. Like I said that some of the budget shoes I got last year, I'd, I'd happily grab them ahead of this. Um, I tried to give it the benefit of the doubt, and I have to give it the benefit of the doubt. I said the first run, I was massively disappointed. The first couple of runs, they didn't really grow on me. Um, it does protect the legs. I do, I do have slightly less doms and soreness and achy legs the day after recovery run that I would have had last year in, in the budget um, Adidas I ran in last year. So the, the the foam, the DNA loft is a bit more obviously protective and obviously there's more of it than the Adidas had. So again, it does protect the legs and the joints a bit more. Um, but it's, it's still a massively disappointing shoe. For £130, I was expecting far more. Um, it's a recovery day shoe. Again, I did my research and didn't pick it up for the wrong reasons. I picked it specifically for that reason because a lot of people were saying it's it's comfortable, it's... it's um, like I say, it's protective and it's squishy and it's, it's, it is comfortable, it's one of those three things. It does protect those a tiny bit, but it's not particularly enjoyable to run in. It's a bit of a plodder, it's a bit clumpy, there's a lot of rubber on the outsole, the midsole doesn't really give you anything, um, it overheats, 
it's just a lot of shoe and not a lot of benefit really for me. So yeah, value, I'm gonna have to give it a six out of 10. If, if for 130 pounds, I wouldn't, I couldn't recommend this shoe to anyone. If anyone said to me, would you recommend the Brooks Ghost 14? Absolutely not. I'd, I'd go and get any other shoe, to be honest. Um, there's far, other, far, far more other shoes you can get for that price range. Um, some, some of them aren't even recovery day shoes, but because they're such, so much more squishy and soft and foamy, in terms of the midsole, they're probably better for recovery day runs. Um, so I'd always recommend them ahead of these. So yeah, six out of 10 for value. Very disappointed with that price, 130 in terms of what the shoe would, was giving me personally anyway, at this point in time. And then just finally now to wrap up, I always give a durability prediction. Um, obviously this is just based on my current usage, what I've been using it for, and then my guesstimation in terms of my experience of running shoes and what I think this shoe's gonna manage to get out. Now this is one of the probably one of the big positives. I don't know if they've built it purely around this one area in terms of long lasting, um, but this is probably one of the few, few things that I can knock it on. Like I said, I, I've done well over 120K now. Um, like I said, I'll do some close-ups, but outsole, minimal, if if not any wear and tear whatsoever on this extensive rubber, which is probably, a like I said, I think I said there's a negative, there's a lot on there, but it means it will last and last. Midsole, again, because it's that firm, it's not gonna start creasing. Um, it's not gonna die away, I don't think. It's not like these soft, super plush, um, squishy foams where they've got a limited lifespan because they're so soft and squishy, the compression eventually just wears them out. This is firm enough to last and last. The upper again, because it's dual, uh, dual layer and it's quite substantial. Again, that's not gonna fall away and, and rip and tear anytime soon. So um, durability, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. Um, prediction, I'm gonna go at 600 miles plus. Um, I'd say 900K, probably more. Um, I just can't see it going anyway. It just seems to be like, it'll, it'll outlast brick buildings this, this year. It's just gonna last and last and last. And that is a one massive positive. Um, I'm trying to think if I'll give, should I give it the benefit of it. If it was a daily trainer, and, and it would be decent because you it, it could do it. You can't do everything. I said there's a lot of things you can't do. But in terms of durability, if you grab this as this is your one and only trainer, then you could get out there regular, regularly a couple of times a week in it, run decent mileage in it, and it would probably last a long time anyway. So if it was your one and only trainer, durability wise, it's not a bad grab because it will last and last. And we'll, every time you stick it on your foot, it's comfortable and we'll just munch the miles. Um, maybe I should try and do a little bit. I have tried to run a little bit quicker in it and it's just not there. So I was thinking as a daily trainer, I couldn't really recommend it as a daily trainer either because it, it's it's not propulsive. It's not easy to run in. It's not particularly enjoyable to run in. So I wouldn't want to grab this on a daily basis. Uh, but yeah, now I'd for durability. That's one of the main positives of the shoe. Yeah, my maths is 33 and a half out of 50. So 67%, so not a great score. I said probably one of the lowest scoring shoes I've reviewed uh, for a long time. Um, and a lot of that is is around the midsole and obviously just the general um, feel I've got from the shoe and obviously the higher price I paid for it and the fact it's been very disappointing overall. But yeah, drop in the comments if you're a Brooks fan, if you're running the Brooks Ghost this iteration or any of the previous ones, uh, is there something I'm missing? I genuinely tried to give it the benefit of the doubt. At first one I was massively disappointed, I'm hoping it would have a bit of a breaking period. Um, it has got slightly more, comf um, slightly more squishy in terms of the foam, but it's still nowhere near where I was expecting it to be. And that high drop, I just don't understand it. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a shoe designer and it's probably a good thing I'm not, but if I was, um, I would genuinely bring that squish um, and softness down of the midsole significantly and I'd reduce that drop as well from about 12 to probably about eight would be ma maximum, probably even six would be fine. Therefore, you've got far more midsole underneath your foot. If it's far more squishy, it would be far more comfortable, far more... Uh, protective and far more enjoyable to run in on a slower, easier day run, which is what this kind of shoe has been, hopefully, well, presumably pitched for. for. Uh, but yeah, overall, just very disappointed with the Brooks Ghost. Um, like I said, it's, it's going to it's stay, it's going to stay in my rotation. It's, got, it's got not going to go anywhere. It's the shoe I've picked for my recovery days, an easy run in this year. It will continue to use use for that. I have got some decent mileage in it already, so. It's not all bad, but yeah, just overall, the, the word is disappointed. It's not what I was expecting, especially that price bracket. But yeah, drop in the comments if, if I've missed something, if you've got a good experience with the Brooks or, or different model of Brooks or previous iterations are better than this iteration. Um, I won't something back on Brooks just yet, but yeah, it will put me on alert in terms of future purchases. So yeah, but yeah, as always, thank you for watching. That's said, the others will drop pretty quick. The Reebok float ride isn't far behind my daily trainer. My Takumi Speed Shoe, the Takumi 108, is again, will be reviewed soon once I hit, once I hit the milestone of 50k plus. Um, so yeah, look out for them. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.